So it's a really exciting and encouraging first news from the, actually the first efficacy trial that has reported data on the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine. And as she also said, this is encouraging news for this vaccine technology because we haven't had a licensed vaccine uh, that is based on, on uh, RNA technology. But we have to also uh, acknowledge that the results are still somewhat preliminary. And, you know, I don't want to put a spoiler alert on this, but we need to know how long the protection will last. And at the moment, we're looking at data from 28 days of the follow-up after the volunteers had received their first two injections. I think it's very significant because it will allow us to generate new vaccines at great speed. And, you know, the, the fact that uh, the genomics or the genomic information of the virus was so quickly available really positioned people to um, get on with this kind of vaccine design. And there are two of this uh, vaccine design, RNA vaccines already in phase three trials, one being the Pfizer-BNT vaccine, the other one being the Moderna vaccine, with others to follow. There are 33 candidates relying on these RNA RNA constructs that I'm aware of at the moment, although few have only come through uh, to the last phases of trials. But this is really exciting. And we just need to now also give the regulators a chance to look at the dossiers that are going to be provided to, for example, the FDA or the EMA to um, understand whether all the conditions are fulfilled. And there needs to be a certain follow up period as well before even an emergency licensure can be granted. Well, it's uh, it's very exciting, and uh, particularly, I think um, you know there's still some regulatory hurdles to get over. Particularly looking at um, who was in these trials and the kind of age and whether the efficacy is true for everyone on the trials. But it's uh, very exciting news, and um, fortunately, we have uh, experts who've been looking at this for some time. Uh, the Joint uh, Committee for Vaccinations and Immunizations. These are the experts who um, are looking at who should get this vaccination. It's important to say a few things. One is it's generic advice. It's not uh, for this particular vaccine. And secondly, it's interim advice. Um, and if more information comes, they may adjust it. And thirdly, it's for England and Wales. But essentially, who gets it? If you're in a care home, if you're a, a care home worker or a resident, you're top of the list. And of course, that's uh, because your uh, care home residents are probably at highest risk. Then you look at health and social care workers. Um, uh, the frontline workers, if you like. And then we go down the ages. If you're over 80, if you're over 75, 70, 65, and then you get to the group which are high risk, no matter how old they are, the adults are that are high risk. And then you go down the ages, 60, over 60s, over 55s and over 50s, and then uh, everybody else. And uh, that's uh, that's how, at the moment, with the limited information we have, the vaccine will be allocated.